Hey guys, thanks for tuning in on another video of mine. This one's going to be kind of quick and easy. Often I get asked, what camera do I take out for my street photography? And not only what camera do I take out, but how do I set it up? So more often than not, I usually end up using a Fuji X100 series camera. And in this instance, it's the brand new X100V. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the most efficient way to set up your X100 series camera so you never miss a photo when you're out on the streets. It's a simple camera, set it up simply. When I mean set up the camera simply, that's simply just stating that I use the camera more often than not on aperture priority. You can see on the top dial here that I have A selected for aperture priority, meaning that anything that I select on my aperture is going to coincide with the correct shutter speed for exposure on the top dial. I don't have to sit there and fiddle around with the settings in order to get the proper exposure. I can just simply use aperture priority and it'll set my time accordingly. If I tilt the camera down just a little bit here, you can actually see on the ISO dial as well, I have that on A. If you were to pick this up and spin it around to choose your ISO manually, you can do that. Although I found that shooting it again on the designation of A simply makes it easier and faster and more efficient, especially while out on the street. You'll also notice that my exposure comp dial is set on C as opposed to picking my exposure comp by using the dial manually. Again, just another reason that I'll go into in a few minutes to make the camera more efficient and faster out on the street. Now, I also have this function button set up for something special as well as the front button here. Those of you that do not know, this is also a function button that you can assign. And I'll get into how I assign that in a second. Okay, now let's take a look at the back of the camera. We can dive into this menu a little bit deeper. But by setting it up this way, I found that it's the quickest way and most efficient way to capture images out on the street and ensure that you never miss anything. Using autofocus, I select all in the menu, which allows me to cycle through each focusing mode simply by selecting the dial, the uh, joystick, and then scrolling through either direction cycling through however I want. I can simply go to single point, move around if I wish. I can go to um, a large square zone and move around if I wish. Or I could bring it all the way out to wide tracking. Again, selecting all in your menu, focusing parameters as all uh, will allow you to cycle everything through. And again, you don't have to dive in and do anything further. I also have this a AEL and AFL lock button in the back set as exposure lock. That's kind of really not that important because with mirrorless cameras, I can simply just ride the exposure and, you know, pick what I'm trying to expose for uh, rather than locking the exposure and then recomposing. But nonetheless, I do have it locked on and off. Getting back to my exposure, like I told you before, I'm using the dial on the top set up as command, and I'm using the front command dial in the front of the camera as my exposure. You can see the dial on the left going all the way up, all the way down. The benefit of doing this is not only speed, but it gives you a little bit more if I were to select it manually you can see that my dial shrank down to three stops as opposed to the command dial which gives you full five not that you're going to use five but it's nice to have it and again it just makes it quicker to shoot aperture priority and use this front dial for exposure i'm going to bring this down a little bit so it's not too bright on the screen now again the other button that i choose for a function button is this top here i set that as film simulation 
The reason why I picked that as film simulation is simply by pressing it while looking at a scene in live view, I can select whatever simulation I want that best applies to the scene. If I want to shoot in black and white, I can see a live preview of the scene right before my eye without having to dive into the menu or guess the way it's going to look prior to shooting. I can actually see a live version of it just by setting this as my function button for simulation. And again, these are all custom simulations that I set up that have my desired look. Yours may vary, but again, it's just easy to get to, very intuitive, and while out on a scene shooting, I can just simply pick it right through here and I know what I'm gonna get right before I shoot. If I dive into my Q menu, I have it simply set up like this. I pick translucent background with 16 tiles. I have my base custom settings up here, scrolling one through seven. And each time I pick something, you can see the other tiles changing. For number two, I have my settings, my AF settings as all, like we discussed before, allows me to cycle through all the focusing parameters. I have facial tracking on and off right here. I have my white balance timer. I always think it's good to have a timer easily accessible, especially if you're going to use your X100 in any kind of family setting or uh, vacation mode. It's always nice to be able to, you know, perch this up or even on a small tripod like I have right here and able to get to that setting really quick, two or 10, and able to get the shot. Grain, I have a tile set for that if I wanna get a little more artistic with my JPEGs or if I want the grain off. This is actually gonna show me what the film simulation that I'm using, the base layer of it is. So now this is classic negative, but in the sense of something that I have labeled as modern color, that's my own recipe. You can see that it is still a classic chrome base layer and that affords me the information right there over here i have photometry if i want a spot meter or center weight meter over here i have my highlight tones my shadow tones and i also have dynamic range and dynamic range priority and you'll notice if i turn on dy dynamic range priority to auto strong or weak you'll notice that shadows and highlights become grayed out because this mode here is taking over your tone curve. This is no longer needed. If I turn that back off, your settings remain. You can turn on your dynamic range to auto, 100, 200, or 400, depending on the scene. Your tone curve will still apply. The only time it will vary and shut off as if you turn on the priority. I have my ND filter right here. The ND filter is great and it's it's a really valuable tool to have accessible fast if you want to set up something artistic and blur some water or blur some speeding cars or anything uh, artistic it's great to have the ND filter especially if it's a bright day and you want to shoot wide open. I have my flash compensation as well as my flash on and off. And on the very last tile, I have my LCD brightness. And although this might not be a big deal, it's actually a good thing to have because if you're shooting indoors at night and you don't want to highlight your face or you don't want to ruin your night vision, it's always good to turn your LCD down a little bit. During the day, you may want to pump it up for bright sunlight. Now, again, in the front of the camera, I told you about this button right here. And I'm going to show you what I use that for. Accessing that front button, I have for my auto ISO. And you can see from my ISO settings, this basically covers me for everything that I'm going to need. I have a 160 base, a 12800 ceiling, and I have a 160th shutter speed. This allows me anything indoors or dark. For ISO number two, I have ISO 160 as a base, 6400 as a ceiling, and a 160th shutter speed. This is going to give me everything that I need 
general photography while out and about anything shooting uh, stills or just people that aren't moving ISO number three is basically built more for speed 160 on the base 6400 as a ceiling and I have a 1 400th shutter speed this is going to be great when I'm walking around in the city and I need to grab pictures quickly and stop some movement the last thing that I have set up is this rear command dial if I push this I get a zoom and that can be scrolled in or out to get a larger magnification or less push it again and you return back again that's just how I set up my X100 I find that to be the most efficient way to always make sure that I really never miss a photo everything's intuitive everything's within a fingertip away I don't have to deep dive into the menu system to try to find the functions that I'm looking for everything is just either on the touch screen or accessible through a button I hope you found this video helpful please consider subscribing hit the notification bell follow me on Instagram I'll put the link below now the only thing to do is go out with your X100 and get some shots and like I said I hope this uh, video helped you uh, figure out how to set up your camera thank you